Brooklyn Independent Television. Whatever your point of view on health care reform, you'd probably agree that fixing the system is vital to the long-term health of the overall economy. The same holds true for every individual business owner facing the inexorable rise in the cost of health insurance. The status quo just cannot be sustained. Are there solutions out there, like the proposed health insurance exchange for New York State? Here to talk about this is Ben Geyerhan, Director of Special Projects for the Small Business Majority. Ben, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So what is the Small Business Majority? We're a national uh, nonprofit. We do advocacy for small businesses. We are, our goal is to represent the 26 million small businesses in the country. We focus mostly on businesses smaller than 100 and, and, and actually have a particular focus really on the smallest of business, below 50 employees. And what are some of the issues that the small business majority works on here in New York uh, State? For the last few years, we've been very focused on health care. Health care is the issue, and, and we'll go into it in a little bit, that has really, really um, been very, very difficult for small businesses to deal with. But we also deal with issues related to the clean, clean tech economy, um, access to capital, uh, and, and issues, other issues related to sort of what we call human resources, so minimum wage, um, family medical leave, and paid sick days. Great. So let's, turning our attention to health insurance. Uh, it's a, probably one of the largest issues facing most small businesses uh, here in Brooklyn. Uh, the landscape is changing. Uh, we are hearing a lot of new uh, uh, proposals that are being uh, put forth by the state legislature. Uh, so what are health uh, insurance exchanges and what are they going to mean for our small businesses? Well, uh, health insurance exchanges were mandated by the Affordable Care Act, the, 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 the legislation that was passed by Congress and signed by the President um, last year. Uh, and they're what they sound like. They're places for small businesses and individuals to go and purchase health insurance. Um, and there is some debate about whether those will be separate markets, but essentially they're a big grocery store, if you will, to go and purchase health insurance. Okay, so you walk into the grocery store, and what are you going to find? Well, that's what we don't know. Um, what the, the Affordable Care Act, the, the, again, the federal legislation mandates the creation of these exchanges and puts some parameters around what they have to look like. But we don't know. Each state is going to make a lot of decisions about what exactly that's going to look like. We do know a few things. First, it's going to be uh, probably a web-based interface. So an individual or a small business can go into a website and see the different plans. We know that the plans are going to be standardized some, to some degree. Uh, and we know that, uh, that a lot of the functionality of the thing will make it easier. will make it just easier for purchasing. You won't have to have as much assistance in doing, in doing the work. So what if I'm an existing small business owner and I've already got a plan in place? Uh, I've probably faced increases over the years, but I've somehow managed uh, to keep my plan in place. Uh, what, what is this going to mean for me, if anything? Well, if they get it right, it'll mean that your, your costs will stabilize, at the very least. And, and this is really important. We, um, we've done a lot of polling on health insurance, and what we discovered is about 80% of small businesses now that have health insurance cite costs as the biggest problem to keeping health insurance. And about 80% of those businesses that don't have health insurance are saying, I can't purchase because it's too expensive. The exchanges, in the worst case, if, if it's done right, will stabilize that. So you won't see these massive increases every year. And in the best case, we'll bring, begin to bring the cost down for uh, health care premiums. And is that because uh, there'll be more choice in the marketplace? Is that why the costs will come down? Or? No. Uh, what, what, what the exchanges are intended to do is to create buying pools. And we all know that if, you know, why does Sam's Club and why does Walmart get a better price? Well, because they buy in bulk. Well, the exchanges are going to buy in bulk. They're going to have enormous purchasing power, and that will, uh, will, will allow the, um, the exchange to get a better price and get a better plan. We know, I mean, it is, it is patently obvious. In New York, if you are a business larger than 50, your, your, uh, your rates are about, it's, it's somewhere between 10 and 15 percent lower than if you're smaller than 50. Why? Because the smaller businesses simply don't have the same kind of leverage in the marketplace. So where have we seen, uh, anywhere in the nation, where have we seen these exchanges, uh, you know, play out? There aren't a lot of example, examples. Massachusetts has had an exchange for a couple of years. This has not been a particularly good exchange for small businesses. It hasn't been bad for small businesses. It just hasn't been, um, it hasn't achieved a lot in terms of providing assistance to small business. But it has been a great um, provider of health care in general, and it's brought prices and pricing down. I won't say down. It's flattened the pricing. Utah has also done this, not with any great success. Uh, and there have been places where exchanges have worked over short term. The problem is an exchange really won't work unless everybody's um, in the same system. Uh, and that's why this is really a very big experiment. We're going to see whether or not the states can attract enough interest to really make these things work. And will the exchanges um, 
I mean, will it be specific to the, the state or will it span across different regions? It's an important question. Yeah. Um, each state is required to create exchanges. Okay. If they don't, the federal government will take it, take it over. States have a lot of options in doing this. One of the things they can do is band together. New York probably won't do that. The reason they, the federal government has given states the option to band together is because some of them are very small. And so, of course, they don't have a lot of purchasing power. So for Maine, which only which has less than a million citizens or around a million citizens, um, well, that's not a lot of purchasing power. So they may want to work with New Hampshire and Vermont and create one big purchasing pool in order to enhance their purchasing power. For New York, with 25 million people, probably is not a bit, not as big a deal. They'll have plenty of purchasing power, so they will probably be a state-based exchange. Will this in any way impact uh, doctors and other providers within the system? Almost certainly. Um, but there's been, a, we don't know exactly how. Part of what's been happening is the cost of health insurance has been going up because providers have been more expensive. When I say providers, I mean hospitals, I mean doctors, everyone. Um, the pie has been growing, so everybody's needs have been taken care of. Well, the pie's got to stop growing. The health care system, that is, the people who provide health insurance, are going, uh, I mean, health care, are going to have to take less. And folks are going to have to figure out how to do what they're doing with less. So certainly doctors are going to have to be part of that system. How that plays out, nobody really knows yet. We don't know yet. Um, so politically, uh, what does this look like in terms of New York State? What's the time frame? It's, I'm assuming it has to be passed through the state legislature and approved by the governor. And yeah, the, so the, there's a very strict set of rules um, for the federal government in terms of passing legislation and getting things done. And these, these rules lay out huge pots of money for the state to get if it meets its benchmarks. So far, the state's done a great job of, of, of meeting all of its benchmarks, and it's accrued about $50 million in, in extra federal money uh, that can be used to build the exchange, and including an innovator grant, which suggests that they uh, are at the cutting edge of what people are doing in exchanges. Um, if they pass legislation this session, and we expect that they will, they're likely to get a, another huge injection of capital, somewhere between $50 and $100 million, to uh, facilitate the creation of the exchange. There are a few more benchmarks, but this is really the big one. They've got to pass a law this year in order to get federal funds. And then in 2014, it's got to be fully operational. And that the, the, this additional funding could be used for what? To build the infrastructure to manage the exchange? Unfortunately, New York's Medicaid backbone, if you will, its, in, its, it's technical uh, infrastructure is quite poor. Uh, and the exchange has to do something really quite amazing. One of the things that the exchange has to do is you as a citizen have to be able to go to the exchange, give them your social security number, and it has to reach through federal data and say, how much money did this person make? And look at, at, at your payroll documents. And then it also has to reach through other data and look at you know, your birth certificate. Use all that data, put it into a Medicaid form, an S-chip form, or there are these special tax credits, and say, either you qualify for one of these programs, or you'll get a certain tax credit level to reduce the cost of health insurance. That's a pretty tough thing to do. Uh, and, and to do that, there's going to need to be an incredible amount of technical infrastructure and, and software. And, and our system wasn't up to that, and that's where a lot of the money will go. Okay. So it, it sounds like, uh, if anything is constant, it is change. Yep. And uh, we could expect uh, to see a new system uh, somewhere down the road. Um, as, a, as a small business owner, a nonprofit organization, actually, uh, this is an important issue for us as well. I think I mentioned to you before that we pay about 15% of our fringe costs in health insurance. And uh, just to have the ability not to, to, uh, to be able to predict whatever the increases are from year to year would be very, very helpful to us. Yeah. It, it, you know, we've spent, small business majority spent about five years in this issue. During that time, we've seen the most unbelievable increase. It is, it is hard to believe that insurance companies um, can price something so poorly that in the next year you're going to be looking at a 60 to 80 percent increase, which actually happened here in New York. I mean, mm -hmm. you would say it's inconceivable. I always tell um, people who haven't experienced this, it's like rent. Can you imagine if your landlord could set your price every year and then did so by coming to you and saying, you know, I know you paid $300 last year, but I'd like 450 next year. It's, it's, it's an abomination. You would never, it wouldn't happen. But yet we accept this with respect to health insurance. This is, frankly, I think the reason why Americans have been so accepting of, uh, well, they haven't been totally accepting, but why this, why this happened, because small businesses were simply getting crushed. I mean, more than half of small businesses simply don't, want, uh, don't offer health insurance, and our polling suggests that they would all love to offer it. They just can't afford it. The price is just too high. They don't have the means. Yeah, 21% was the highest increase we, we faced, and that was unreasonable at the time. We actually switched plans because of it. Most do. I mean, one of the, thing, one of the other big problems that small businesses face is, is their employees are unhappy that 
every couple of years they have to switch. Why? Because insurance companies come in and they, they raise prices and you know there becomes this sort of musical chairs with your insurance. Uh, it, it's unfortunate, uh, but it is a reality if you run a business these days. So does the small business majority, uh, in addition to sort of doing the um, opinion research and, and, and some of the advocacy work, um, do you actually you know work with state legislatures uh, to help draft some of the, the parameters around the exchanges? We don't do drafting. We do do a lot of policy research. Last year I wrote a, I wrote a paper with Professor Jonathan Gruber, who was one of the economists who worked on the Massachusetts um, health, ex health Exchange and their health plan, uh, to talk to figure out what the impact of health, uh, what a, impact of um, a healthcare reform would be in New York to try to get our hands around um, the economic numbers. And of course we communicate that with both the press and with opinion makers and, and, and with uh, um, uh, with policymakers, but we don't get into the drafting. We will certainly offer our, our thoughts, but we don't get into the drafting. Great. Well, Ben, I really appreciate you being here and shedding some light on uh, the change that's coming down the road for health insurance. Well, thanks so much for having me. Great. Download this program's podcast on iTunes, keywords Brooklyn Independent Television.